The CPF system has served Singaporeans well. It was never a perfect system. And it's still not a perfect system, but it is one of the better regarded retirement systems in the world. And these are assessments by serious professionals, those who are in the pension business, the Mercers and many others uh, who focus on these issues. We will have to keep evolving it. And we will, to make sure that it continues to meet the needs of Singaporeans. The changes have been quite significant over the years. In the first phase of the CPF, Singapore was a different place. It was a developing country. Most people were poor. Most didn't own their homes. And the CPF was a very simple scheme a very simple scheme suited to the needs of Singapore and Singaporeans at that time. In substance, it worked much more like a savings scheme for home ownership rather than a scheme for retirement income. It did not look like what you'd regard as a conventional retirement income scheme. It was much more of a scheme for home ownership. Most of a member's CPF money could be withdrawn for housing. There was no special account, no retirement account, no Medisave account, all of which we introduced subsequently aimed at meeting needs in retirement, spending needs in old age. Savings could be withdrawn at 55 with no requirement to ensure a stream of income for basic spending in life. But it had merits. Over 90% of elderly Singaporeans own a home without parallel anywhere in the world. Unlike many other countries, ordinary workers, including lower income Singaporeans, not just the middle class or higher income, not just the middle class or higher income folk, benefited from owning a housing asset that was able to appreciate as the economy developed and the nation progressed. We have avoided the large gulfs that you see in many other countries where a significant proportion of the population has no part in asset appreciation. Plus, they do not need to use retirement savings to pay for home rentals, which is a major cost in most countries, including most of the advanced countries. So they have substantial assets in retirement and they don't need to pay for rental costs. However, many Singaporeans in that generation, today's older generation, are asset rich and cash poor. We will help them get cash out of their homes. Some of today's speakers have suggested ways of doing this and there are ways which we are studying very seriously. So that's the first phase for a Singapore that was, but a generation that's still with us today. Second phase, starting around the mid-1990s, we began rebalancing the CPF system. The later generations of Singaporeans, first and foremost, earned considerably higher incomes. But we also made improvements to the CPF scheme to boost cash savings for retirement we began focusing on the primary task of the CPF as a retirement income scheme starting from the 1990s. Special Medisave and retirement accounts were put in place. We gradually introduced limits to the amount of CPF savings that could be withdrawn for housing and the minimum sum was implemented. We raised the interest rates on the special and retirement account. We also introduced the extra 1% of interest on the first $60,000 to benefit the lower and middle income members. Most CPF members hence earn 5% guaranteed returns on the Special Medisave and Retirement Account or SMRA accounts today and 3.5% on their ordinary accounts, well above market rates for comparable financial instruments. The CPF system has hence developed features that will provide for significantly better 
incomes in retirement. But it retains a significant and unique feature. It still enables home ownership for most Singaporeans. The ordinary account scheme coupled with significantly enhanced housing grants, government grants for housing, enable the vast majority of Singaporeans, including the lower and middle income group, to own their homes. <coughs> Most countries regard this as a strength. We also enhanced government subsidies to CPF members through the budget, through the government budget. Besides larger housing grants, we now provide a regular top-up of lower income members' CPF balances through workfare. These subsidies amount to a significant boost to what a typical lower income member earns on his balances. For example, on top of the 3.5% interest rate on his ordinary account, the workfare payments and housing grants that he gets amortized over his working life will in effect grow his savings by at least another 2.5% a year over a 30 to 40 year working life. So on top of the 3.5% guaranteed return on the ordinary account in the form of an interest rate, you get subsidies which amortized over your working life amount to an additional 2.5%. So in effect, his savings grow by 6% per year. They earn 6% per annum through the combination of CPF interest rates and government subsidies that are provided through the budget. And this does not include the OA savings, the ordinary account savings that he uses to purchase his home, which separately benefits from appreciation and asset value. That's outside of the CPF system because he, he keeps those gains. It also does not include the support that we're providing for medical needs, which is another important objective of the CPF scheme. We are helping MediSave monies go further. We are providing members of the pioneer generation with annual top-ups to their MediSave for the rest of their lives. And we will be providing large subsidies to lower and middle-income Singaporeans to pay for MediShield Life premiums.